Thank you, Michael. Uh, for those who are at the church that don't know me, my name's Calvin Wilson, and here goes. Uh, <laughs> the, the first 30, 33 years of my life was completely about me. Uh, my sister and I, at six years old, experienced the death of my brother Alex at the age of two years. Uh, he died of pneumonia. Uh, my mom and dad at that time, of course, after that happened, they uh, completely started arguing with each other and uh, just during that time it was just rough and they eventually separated and then divorced so uh, without any support from my dad uh, also during this time my mom was pregnant with my youngest brother Tim my, mo my mom worked and did the best she could to support us but we were left most of the time to fend for ourselves during this time period in our childhood we, we never attended church I rebelled as a teenager stealing, lying, cheating and using foul language. When I was 14, I started smoking. When my mom told me not to, I went in the living room, I laid down on the sofa, I bought a pack of Marlboro cigarettes, and I lit that cigarette up in front of my mom in rebellion. So, uh, we were on a road of self-destruction. My mom, uh, my sister, excuse me, my sister sat up in the bed and slit both of her wrists and tried to commit suicide. My mom had to call my dad from New York, who had nothing to do with us, to beg and plead him to come down and take my sister back to New York, to where she, he could deal with her, where my mom couldn't. Uh, at age 17, I'm moving along, okay, because I've got a lot, lot to go. I've got about another hour, so. Uh, uh, as I, 17, I dropped out of school because I didn't like the teachers. I revolted against all authority. Uh, it was all about me and what I wanted, not what, not caring or needing anyone at this time in my life. I could do it all. I, I could not, I could do it all on my own. With no high school diploma, I could not get a good paying job. My mom was at the end of a rope with me. I decided the best thing to do was get out of town and, and get a fresh start. So I joined the Marines. I was thinking that that would make me tough, that that would make me a better person, or that would make, change my life. And here this person, you're thinking, well, here's this person that doesn't like authority, and he's going to join the Marine Corps. Well, <laughs> why? Uh, I thought it would make me more strong and more self-sufficient. Well, since I was 17, my mom had to sign for me to go in. Uh, I dropped out of school, I dropped out of school at age 11, at, at, in 11th grade, so I didn't have any education. So when, when I bought the paper for her to sign, she didn't hesitate. Uh, I joined the Marines in 1966 and was sent to Paris Island for 12 weeks training. Then on completion of it, was signed to an air wing at Camp Lejeune where I would be working in supplies. Well, I did not like the idea, so I just went AWOL and came home. For you who know what AWOL means, it means I came home without leave of absence. I just left. And you don't do that in the Marine Corps. Well, see, there goes Calvin thinking he can do what he wanted to all the time. So I didn't like the idea, so I just went A1 and came home. Needless to say that at this point, I did not have a say-so in what I wanted. After being home for a couple of weeks, two MPs showed up at my front door and said, come on, Calvin, we're going back to the base. I served 30 days in the brig. When I got out, I was told I had two choices. Either I could get a dishonorable discharge, which what you would think would, would ruin my life at that point. If I got a dishonorable discharge, then I would, that would ruin my life. It, it really would. So I decided, well, whoa. I don't want that. And the choice I had, he said, if I didn't straighten up, I could be sent to Vietnam. So I said, send me. <laughs> uh, I was eventually sent to Vietnam and served 13 months. I was responsible for sweeping roads with a mine detector. Also had to clear a line of fire around the perimeter by taking one pound sticks of TNT and putting them in, in the wedges of trees on the perimeter line and blowing them down. And I was good at destructing stuff, so I said, I, I can do this, you know. I can blow up stuff, and I, I can be about that. And with all I, I saw and experienced with that, I, I, I did grow up in a hurry. You can imagine being 17, 18 years old in, in Vietnam in a war. Uh, I grew up in a hurry with no other reason but to survive. Still had no real purpose or direction in my life at that time. Returned home after uh, I, I was out in the field and I contracted malaria. Well. In the jungle, out in the bush, where you don't have any, didn't have any water, a whole lot of water, I developed a temperature of 105. And I was in Vietnam on a, laying down on a 
the grassy surface, they were squeezing banana trees over me to get my temp temperature down. They called in a medevac helicopter where they took me down, put a tag on me, sent me down to the LZ. That's LZ is where the helicopter has to come in and get me. You know. So I'm laying there and I've got a temperature home there and they, with my M16 laying there and they were hollering down to me, see anybody in the trees, Calvin, shoot them. So I said, whoa, I don't know you. I'm half delirious. So uh, I, of course I didn't, didn't see anybody. So about that time a chopper came in, they had to take me and put me in a poncho and throw me up in the chopper because they couldn't come all the way down. So next thing I remember, I woke, I woke up in a chair in a shower on the USS Sanctuary, a hospital ship. And I stayed on that hospital ship for 30 days. Um, after returning home, this, uh, they sent me back out after that, but after returning home, I met Vivian, and we were married in 1971. And I thank God for a Christian wife, because she held me strong. I'll, I'll keep going. I won't get off track. Uh, a year later, our first daughter, Marie, was born. During the next seven years, Vivian and Marie were involved in church. I refused to go. That all changed one Sunday morning when Marie was seven. She came to me and asked me, she said, Dad, why do I have to go to church when you don't go? And so I, did, I said, well, that makes sense. But still, <laughs> this time in my life, I had a good job, was a good husband, father, and provider. Basically a good person. I thought I had covered all the bases that required to complete my life. The question Marie had asked me would not go away, so I decided one Sunday morning I'd give up and go. I didn't want to, and I probably went for all the wrong reasons, but I went. I, went. I got up and made a went. God was working on me even then. I thought, how could he care about someone with my background that would, would refuse him all this time? In 1983, my pastor one day called and asked if I could, he could come by and talk with me. That was a changing part of what happened in my life that changed my life. I got down on my knees and I prayed with my pastor and accepted Christ as my Savior. I was 33 years old. <laughs> that's, a, that's old, isn't it? Some people say I've been, I, I accepted Christ when I was seven or eight. Well, I was old, so I, had, I got a lot of stories I could tell, right? So he says, in August of 1983, our son Brian was born, Brian Travis. Uh, that same year, just a short time after I was saved, our son Brian died at two months from sudden infant death syndrome. Some of you don't know what that is. It's kind of when the brain in the child doesn't click to, to wake up and breathe. So that's what happened. And, uh, uh, knowing Jesus didn't keep our hearts from breaking and didn't make the grief any less real. Uh, but it did give us someone we could lean on. I can say truly, this was the evidence of God's promises coming true that he would not leave us or forsake us in our time of need. And that's... That stuck with me. I said, wow, he loves me that much. And another thing that stuck with me, I noticed how Jesus works, is he took that whole church and how important it is that church flooded our house and he brought the little stand over and the little thing to sign and all this little stuff, food. And, and so I said, wow, a family of God cared enough about me. Jesus cared enough about me. It's not about Calvin anymore. It's about Jesus. Uh, um, Four years later, in 1987, God bless us with our youngest daughter, Stacy. Thank you for that. Uh, we've been here at Gate City since leaving Lynchburg in 1999. We've been here 18 years. Uh, we have been truly blessed to be associated with a church that shows the love of God and the concern for spreading of the word everywhere. Uh, two years ago, I retired from Harris Teeter. I don't know how I feel I don't feel old, but I know that I'm not 20 years old anymore. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I, uh, I've been able to discover and experience that, re that after retiring, uh, more, I have more opportunity to serve, to be used, and to allow God to work through me. I'm as busy now as I was then when I was working. I'm so thankful for the simple fact that as long as God has us here, he can use us. Isn't that appropriate on Senior Citizens Day to say, we're, he can use us no matter how we are and how we're sitting out here in this congregation. Senior citizens matter to God and to this church. I'll, I'll say this, and this is kind of like, I'll try to put a little humor in it for what I've read. So, uh, I work hard. I work so hard for, to get out here and do things for the church. I want to do things for the church. But you know one thing? It's not going to get me in heaven. I'm not going to go to heaven because I work so hard. 
I'm, I've got heaven. I know I've got heaven. 33 years ago, and when I was 33 years old, I was assured that I would have heaven. So I'm working for where I'm going to be. I'm working because Jesus Christ died for me. And so if I work hard, so what? I'm going to work as hard as I can, no matter what anybody says, to, to further his kingdom. Thank you.